evening, Good everyone. Evening. It's been a long day for me. I woke up about 4.30 in the morning. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, it's a long day. Um, right. So uh, we're going to start. She's going to set up, and we're, we're going to start with uh, going into perusal. I think this is the, fir like the first week you're... Uh, some of you have commented on it. I like the highlights and the comments or the questions. Um, I would like you to interact more um, on Perusal platform. Uh, not just uh, you know ask questions and um, and also comment to each other, give some comments to each other. Or uh, I I saw somebody looked up um, the some voc not vocabulary the terms. Um, on Wikipedia and provided a link. That's good, uh, but I actually went in, went in and copied and pasted the Chinese definition onto the uh, the chat. But, you know, more direct. You don't need another link to go go and look up something. So why don't we um, why don't we go into the system as we wait for their setup? Okay. All right. This is not as good as you want. This is better. This is better. Maybe they don't need to know. These are like two white spreads. Yeah, I'm ready to do it. You just can't see your full name. Thank you. 
if you can. So right now the grouping method is allow perusal to automatically assign students to groups. So perhaps next time um, I'll assign you into your your original group then uh, rather than like random assign assigning you to do different groups. How's that? But we'll we'll um, we'll stay in this group by for for now for this uh, for this class. And what I can see here is um, the assignments. This this is it. And uh, thank you for your eighty a total of eighty one comments, fifteen questions, twelve unanswered questions. We still have twelve unanswered questions. Okay, one hour and twenty five minutes average active engagement time. Um, and I am I am able to look at the analytics. Okay, wait, um, I think all comments, are, I was able to look at all the comments. I have marked some of them as red, um, and, um, and yeah, so like generating the whole, like the whole class's um, comments, and so. Um, Yeah, thank you, Karen, for for posting this uh, and um, commenting. This tool is super cool. Okay, great. Okay, so so just to give you an idea of what I can see, um, and I hope that you find this platform uh, useful. Right. Okay, now um, I'm I'm gonna start with. Corpus. Wait. I have restricted you. I'm gonna show this link. All right. <clears throat> so last time, I, I last time we talked about uh, the overall sy syllabus of this course, and I've told you that I was going to introduce Corpus to you, um, and. Right now, almost everything, the materials, are based on corpus. Um, a lot of the materials are based on uh, corpus. Um, if it's not based on corpus, then I wouldn't use it. So I like every material to be corpus informed. Um, and, I, 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 you know, so we're, we're going to learn about what corpus means. The definition of a corpus is that um, it's a collection of text that is stored electronically on a computer. So all different types of, of text. So there are written text, written sources, and spoken text, like real talk, okay? So what are some of the spoken like text sources? What spoken text sources can you think of? If right now I'm building a corpus, okay? Really how cool. So, um, and I'm building a spoken corpus so that I could search any word that is used in this corpus, okay? So what, what, what kind of spoken sources can I use? Can you think of? YouTube. What? YouTube, very good, YouTube. What else? Movie, Movie wonderful. Podcast. Podcast, wonderful. Radio, radio station, right? TV station, and you guys are English teachers. Class students. Classroom, student yeah. discussions, right? So we have like specific dedicated young learner corpus. So for that corpus, we only, they only add, you know, collect data from young learners conversation, okay? So, um, so you, when you're designing your own corpus, uh, you need a, like it needs to be very specific, okay. And also, 
for every source you you add into your corpus, um, you need a note like what how like how many percentage of of the uh, corpus is you know um, from YouTube? How 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 many percent is from TV series and, and that? So the makeup of your corpus will affect the search results. Okay, so. International, we have an international corpus of English. It's, it's, um, it has written text with so, spoken text. Uh, so so a, a complete corpus would be uh, both. Or it could be separate, it, would, it could be both. So um, basically, corpus is information at your fingertips. Large database used in a, use it, like, and you, you can use it like a Google search, internet search. Uh, the most commonly used words in a language can be, you know, you can, you can know what it is by going into the corpus. Uh, information such as which, prepos uh, which preposition follows certain verbs, okay? Um, and if a certain word has gone out of use, okay? So um, for for corpus, you know, if you if you note it down, the like um, notice that ChatGPT when you look up something, it it and it does you know it would uh, sometimes give you results. I only have collection. If you ask something fairly recently, it'll only show you I have my database is up until 2021 or something, right? It's not up to date like to 2023, right? So. Um, Collins, uh, what 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 type of voc no, um, dictionary do you use? Collins. Cambridge. Cambridge. Collins. Collins. Webster. Webster. Longman. Very good. These are really good um, dictionaries. Why? Because they all have their corpus. You know, we uh, before computer. <laughs> was, you know, before, like, be, before the computer age, like, technology is introduced, before we could store information on a computer, how is, how is dictionary made? We transcribe the So they, they have lexicographers, you know, scholars, they liked words, and they would n write down every single word, they would um, make up a sentence, it's all, by a small group of people, right? But now these Collins, Col now Colville Dictionary or Cambridge Webster, they're all based on corpus, and those corpus is like, um, you know, words that we we read in the books, and the, those are authentic language. Okay, so not just provided by a small group of expert, but um, a lot of people. So. There, there's, um, we, we separate different, uh, we, we have large corpus, specialized corpus and small corpus. Usually large corpus would be like um, one billion. One billion would be largest, I think that was um, 10 years ago. Okay, so yeah, um, and it's used, you, you can see long man, it has 100 million words. Five million words of, of American spoken English, okay. Ten million words of student writing. So why, why is um, written corpus larger than spoken corpus? One hundred million words versus five million words. Yes, it's easier to collect, right? For, but now the spoken corpus, um, if we could utilize AI it'll automatically trans, uh, transcribe the audio into text and that makes it easier to have spoken corpus access. Okay, so for Cambridge University Press, one billion words available to its authors. So every Cambridge author have access to um, the corpus and it's one billion words, okay? Collins Co-Build, 450 million words of written and spoken. Okay, and we we do have uh, specialized, and we um, Charles Brown talked about this, uh, right? We talked about business English, fitness English, right? So that's specialized corpus. Um, so yeah, they have Cambridge and Nottingham business English corpus, 
Um, my case, this is another corpus. Uh, um, and yeah, so cor these are different corpus and these in turn, they're corpora. So changes in dictionaries. In 1960s, there is no access to corpora, many, many different corpuses, and only relied on intuition and observations about how words were used. Okay, so in 1980, Collins uh, Birmingham University International Language <coughs> Database Cold Build Project built um, at University of Birmingham. They they have this project going on and they collected this database and uh, they call it Cold Build. So later on, uh, Collins Cold Build Dictionary is based on this corpus. 1987, the Collins Cold Build English Language Dictionary, uh, uh, you know, was formed, was published. And in 1996, Collins Cold Build Grammar Pattern Series. Okay, so they use the, um, the corpus to, de to develop grammar patterns and grammar worksheets into books, right? So those are all based on um, corpus. Uh, it's corpus informed, okay? Say, it's, you know, it, you can't compete with computer or corpus because if you teach a word and you need to make up three sentences, you can't compete with the sentences provided by the corpus, right? So now we have ChatGPT. Every single person have access to AI, and so it's even more powerful. And you know, it's, AI is empowering us, uh, giving us power to over. You know, do, do we need dictionaries anymore? I don't know. If you could ask ChatGPT, and you know, ChatGPT could provide three or hundred, a hundred, you know, sample sentences for you, right? So that's how powerful you know AI is, right? Okay, so these are uh, the books. These are corpus-informed books. Okay, so yeah. Um, so how how you know we, we talked about the the grammar, right? Grammar, and um, so back in like nineteen before nineteen ninety six, when they produced this, they they kind of analyzed the patterns of the word forget. Okay, and so you could see this in a dictionary. Forget cannot be followed by just a preposition. Forget to verb is uh, the most likely pattern. Forget about. Okay, wait. How do you know forget to is the most likely pattern? Or And then for, forget about plus noun is also common. It's corpus informed. Okay, because they, they ran the corpus key in the word forget and, you know, determine the number of sentences they could found on this forget to, and then the verb, and then forget about, and then the noun. You know, so they know which, uh, which pattern to teach the kids, okay, right? So um, forget occurs frequently in imperative statements in the following pattern. Verb plus forget, verb plus verb phrase. Very often the imperative verb is negated. Don't forget to take care in the sun. Okay, so these are several, these are examples, okay? So we do the corpus search and then, you know, we kind of analyze it. So, so here are some of the examples. Uh, certain modal auxiliary verbs make patterns with forget, should not forget, I can forget, couldn't forget, so you know which ones would go with forget, okay? And certain time expressions make patterns with forget. I will never forget, you'll forget, shall, I shall never forget, going to, you're going to forget. So we have corpus informed grammar books, okay? It's not just one sentence structure fits in all content. It's not relied on intuition to make up sentences. It's not British English and you know American English all mixed up. But you know it's a, a very clear clear it has a clear proof of how language is used differently in different contexts. You could separate American English from uh, British English. Rules come for 
from real examples. These rules that I've just presented to you forget about forget, it comes from real examples in the corpus. And, um, and it helps identify regional variations uh, and changes in grammatical patterns. So these are corpus-informed grammar books. Okay, so what is the reason for all this? As, as English, like your English teachers, um, we need to know, like um, right now, it's an age that we're not just teaching by the books, what's in the book, but since we're promoting bilingual education, well, a lot of the, these lessons has to be created by you guys. And if you could use Corpus to you know, help you design the materials, it's, it's Corpus and foreign materials, right? It's more powerful than a random English teacher without any knowledge of the Corpus. Great, you know, and you know. So, they, so this, is, this, this is why I think it's important, okay? Sometimes, you know, you, we need to learn how to use um, the corpus to help us uh, develop the materials. Okay, what about word frequency list? Do you know what word frequency list means? Okay, so this, it gives us information about word frequencies, how frequent this word is used. Okay, so um, turn to your neighbor and, you know, um, guess what word is the most commonly used word? The most frequently used words. I, some say I. Yes. And the. Yes. The. Shawajulame. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. The most and least frequently used words in corpus and help, and it's helpful when designing vocabulary materials. So you need to know which vocabulary to pick to teach, okay? All right, so the 15 most frequent words from four different corpora. The, you, you didn't guess you, right? Nobody guessed you. You did, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> The and you, right? And then, yeah, it's either the, you, oh, and the third one, it has an I. Okay, so depending on the makeup of the, um, the, the corpus, right? Isn't it interesting? Right? These 15 words, what does these 15 words tell you? Now that you know the, the 15 most uh, frequently used words, as a teacher, what do you do? We should teach the students with these words. Use them more. <laughs> we should teach them, the students that they can. Exactly, we should well. teach them these words. Yeah. Are these words, okay, let's think back at you know, our textbooks, elementary school textbooks. Are these words vocabulary words no. you no. teach? No. Word cards you put on the board separately? No. They are sight words. Do you teach sight words? Uh, you do? Used to. Good. In cram school. In cram school. And it's only in cram school because we don't have a set of sight words, you know, built in or, you know, provided in our elementary uh, tech English textbooks. And that's wrong. Right? Yeah. Right? So we should teach sight words. Because if you teach these 15 words, the kids are most likely, they most likely read it uh, more often than, you know, ever. So, yeah, this, it's, so that's why we need to be uh, corpus informed. With corpus, the, with cor different corpora, we are able to, um, we're, 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 we know that these words are most frequent and we should teach them first. So these sight words are, Really, really important. Okay. Okay. The third one is an Irish English, and, and there's things, and I'm assuming, oh, this is shop encounters. Okay, university lectures, English language class, you, 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 perhaps teacher, you, <laughs> stop snoring in class, no, I'm just kidding. Casual conversation, the the and I I I. Okay, I went to I went to I went shopping yesterday. I went to the airport, so it's I. 
All right. And shopping encounters. You are you coming with me? Of course. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, thanks for that. Right. So shopping encounters. Right. Oh, please. Can you please wrap this up for me? All right. So so in different so these in dif different settings, uh, it's you know the set of fifteen most common frequently used words are very different, but you could find similarities. And when you um, when you have them all in the you know when you do a search for all of them like uh, one billion word a corpora, you know you'll find out you should teach the most frequently used two hundred words something like that. Okay, all right so. Frequency of use in speech and writing. It's different, right? It, do you know that it's different or do you think it's the same? The frequency of word use. Different? I, I think it should be different, right? Okay, Corpora has had a very important impact on our understanding of language. Many words and structures have much higher frequencies in either spoken or written language. Okay, take the commonly used word no, for example, if we compare its frequency of use in one million words of spoken and written language, here's how its frequency differs. So what does this tell you? Say it to your group. Tell your partner, what does this tell you? Okay, who, who can come up here and explain? Volunteers. Anyone, 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 anyone? Come on, come on. All right, come on. So me and my partner just talk about, you know, in a spoken language, like in conversation, we like to say, you know, you know, you know, like that. So maybe that's part of the reason why we, you know, know has a you know, high frequency here. And also in written language, when we write, we, we, we tend to use more formal words. Like when we want to say, when we want to express the idea of no, maybe we will use another word like, you know, <laughs> inform or understand, which are more, you know, for formal. <laughs> That's an example. Very good example. Very good example. Yeah, let's take a look. Spoken corpus. Uh, the, this is like concordancing and uh, the way you look at it, you don't look at it from left to right, you look at the word no, and then the right hand side and left hand side, take a look from, we'll just focus on the right hand side to the word no. It was, it is you know, I don't know, I know, you know, you know, you know, you don't know, I didn't know, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know, you know, you know, I know, already know, I don't know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. So yeah, you guessed it right, right? It's you know, it's more often than I know, right? What about written corpus? Let's take a look. We know of, I don't know what, I don't know why, you, if you didn't know, I just know your, you don't know, we know, to know, I know, you should know, you know, we know, do you know, we, we do know, he does not know, if you know who you are, must know, you want to know, want to know, will know. So this is written corpus, okay? So it's a lot different. So this is the compare the frequency of I don't know, I know, and you know. 
<laughs> right? So this this is spoken corpus. A lot of I don't know. I know. And you know, right? Right? So compared to uh, written, there's more I don't know in the written form than I know you we you know, right? So what does you know mean trying to convey when we say you know? It's we're trying to um, convey that what we're about to say is shared knowledge, shared knowledge. Our hope back then was simply to design curtains that people would like to make them from the best fabrics in a way that make them last and to sell them at a piece that would be fair and affordable. And you know, that's still the hope we share today. Okay, so uh, shared knowledge, right? This, it's a dis discourse marker used when statements are assumed to be shared knowledge or uncontroversial or logically linked. Okay, so this is the purpose of, you know, okay, discourse. It's a discourse marker. When, what about I know? It shows interest or surprise or shock. Um, who could, who could um, do B from this side? From this side. B. A, B, A, B. Okay. Who? A, okay, A, B. A, B, you too? Okay, okay, try, 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 try the first conversation, first dialogue. There is a change in this weather, it's very windy too. Oh, I know. Why is now we going to come up with 2,000? I know. It's two thousand three hundred per person for two weeks. Okay, great. Thank you. So it should be, it, yeah. So how is Naomi going to come up with two thousand? So your how how do you express that? How is how how is Naomi going to come up with two thousand? I know. I know. Right. So yeah. Yeah, so, so dip, like, uh, based on what you're trying to convey, your intonation is different, the way you express it is different. So, yeah, response token, just indicate uh, that you're listen. I know, I know, yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't know is hedging, okay? Um, and she doesn't like him. No, she thinks he's arrogant as well. He can come across that way sometimes you know he's outspoken yeah I don't know I like I'd like you to meet him because at least you'd be honest with me so like, I don't know the type sort of you know kind of disagreeing right I don't know or would you like uh, that would you like that one honey I don't know Grant. It's nice, but I don't think it matches. <laughs> right? You're trying try to soften soften up the uh, rejection, right? So, yeah. Yeah, trying to be polite, yeah. Uh, so hedging used before ideas, especially ones that are contrary to the uh, prevailing idea or opinion in a conversation. It has a softening effect. Uh, it reduces any offense or conflict between the speakers when contrary ideas, opinions are being presented. So that's hedging, hedging. Okay, so, oh, um, any, any one of you writing your thesis in English? We, we, use, a lot of, we use a lot of hedging in our, our thesis writing, okay? Because you can't be so confident. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, what do you learn from this? Being able to show that we recognize what is shared knowledge to respond to what a speaker is saying or to soften the impact of what we are saying are all core functions of, the sp of spoken grammar. Okay. So this is like spoken grammar. Um, I remember when I first um, learned about this. It was so it, it was so shocking, and I was, I was like, "Oh yeah, why why didn't we um, teach spoken grammar in our 
junior high school or senior high school, do we ever teach spoken grammar? It's all based on a large reading, right? Reading, and and you know they don't they don't actually teach this, right? So how many of you teach junior senior high school? We have one. Yeah, is that true? It's true. It's still true now. Okay, that's sad. And so 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 at least you know. So um, yeah. And um, yeah, so who's gonna teach us to use you know? Who, who's who's gonna teach us to use I don't know? Huh? Movies. Only movies. Yeah. <laughs> Only movies, but not from the, your teachers. So what if our kids don't even watch movies, right? So they're not just. Uh, no wonder why um, BTS. They said on the um, Allen show that they learned their English from watching Friends. Friends. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So you only get that from the movies or from perhaps Netflix, but you really need to spend time, you know, watching those movies. And we're, yeah, so perhaps we should focus on spoken grammar more. It, you know, it's more useful. You communicate with people. Right? More useful than the reading skill. It can distinguish clearly between what happens in spoken and written language, has allowed us uh, to see the important difference between the two ways of communicating, and now we know it's totally different, right? So this is spoken grammar, and deciding Carter and McCarthy, 1995. So I found this very interesting. So where do we go from here? We need to understand how corpora have been used in materials and other learning resources, okay? Um, and how to teach vocabulary and grammar using a corpus, okay? So, so perhaps we have some idea of how to you teach vocabulary or, or at least select the, the you know, appropriate or more frequent vocabulary, okay? Um, and how to teach speaking and listening, perhaps using a spoken corpus, okay? How do you teach reading and writing using a corpus? Okay, so these are, and what is data driven? So data driven learning, um, it's also um, like worksheets based on, uh, provided by the teachers based on their corpus results. Um, so basically it might look like the, the concordancy that I showed you about no. Um, and giving students a lot, a lot, exam a lot of examples and help, not just giving them the rules. They need to figure out the rules on their own. Okay, you know, it's just like um, extensive reading, and after you've read so much, you kind of acquired the language or the grammar without knowing. But um, in Taiwan, we are doing the exact opposite. We teach them the rules and ask them to make sentences by the rules. I can never learn grammar by those <laughs> forget plus two plus verb. I never remember that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. All right, are you ready for quiz time? <laughs> so um, um, before we get to this, I would like you to talk, share something that you've, um, remember from what I've just shared with you. Um, at least share two things that you remembered or you think it's important from what I just shared with you. Two information, okay. I 
Do you mind if I turn the camera? No? Okay. <laughs> Come on, I'm wearing my glasses. I don't have my contact lenses on. And this will be uploaded onto YouTube, and I need you to sign up. Well. <laughs> as private as private. But if you, if, but if you agree, I'll just um, you know, say it as public. Right. Well, nobody's going to watch it. <laughs> Is it okay? Yeah, sure. So actually, I yesterday I just confirmed it with my. Um, that's so. There's a the scenario. It's called the duckling is swimming in the pond or on the pond. Uh -huh. um, Grammatic speaking, we would say on the pond because that's how we're understanding it. it's a surface. Uh -huh. But then, to my surprise, after I googled this in the data driven corpus, it shows like in the pond is more commonly used because uh -huh. they're talking about refer the pond as the area the duckling are swimming in. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, oh yeah, so this is actually like that I didn't know of because yeah. if you ask most native speakers, they probably say, oh, it's in the pond, mm -hmm. not on the pond. But mm -hmm. in a grammar rules, they probably say it's on because mm -hmm. it's on the surface, it's not like ducklings is swimming in the water. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's something like we could definitely use or consult to mm -hmm. if there's a misunderstanding of certain <coughs> propositions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a very concrete example. Concrete example. What about this? Oh, they've already did it, so. <laughs> okay. Um, our group thinks about that the side word is very important. Uh -huh. But in our textbook, there's, uh, we don't focus on the side word very much. We mm -hmm. usually teach some new vocabulary or sentence pattern. And our solution about this is to give the students some movie clips mm -hmm. in the class mm -hmm. to help them to learn about the sight words. Oh, there's movie, there's video clips on sight words? Um, we're just thinking about this idea. Okay, <laughs> yes. all, right. all right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Sight words, you need to teach sight words. Mm -hmm. Now that we know it's the most so we can use uh, There's a question I wanted to, like, uh, to right? uh, yeah. <laughs> so, no. uh, I was thinking because we use the word uh, the, the uh, in. Uh huh. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, on on. You like, mean to Ryan? Yeah, to Ryan. To okay. Ryan. Like we use on on solid like objects. Okay. And yeah. the water is liquid, so we don't use on. Oh my God! Expert here. Oh, right? uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh debate. Uh, debate. Uh, actually, I, I looked it up in a dictionary. If you actually consult to Collins dictionary, it was say on. 
But like you say, because we use uh, we use the duck, we use the water as a surface because they're not actually swimming in the water. They're actually on the surface. But this stuff it like falls like. <laughs> yeah, they're pedaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, pedaling. They're pedaling so, so that's, that's on. In right. No, in, it's inside. Just like okay, I can give you a similar example. This is like on on the playground and in the playground. Both are. Both are acceptable, and, but you, it depends on how you use the word. Mm -hmm. In the playground means like you're talking about the parameter mm -hmm. of the park, the playground you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But on the playground means the person standing on the playground. Mm -hmm. So both are acceptable, but it means different things. Mm -hmm. So use the both words in a different context. Right. Don't ask me. I, I, I can't explain grammar. I, everything is instinctive. I have a question. Yes. Go ahead. More debate? Yeah. Because uh, because we'll say on bed or in bed. Is there, is there any difference? But it's it's different different we are in bed. bed we are like on bed. On in bed is the mean you're, you're sleeping. Yeah, you're but on um, bed, like, I tell that in junior high school. <laughs> <laughs> Joining the conversation, yes, like, please. In bed and on the bed. So it, it's mm. different, different uh -huh. situations. In bed, when you're in, in bed, bed and on the you're bed. sitting mm -hmm. on the bed. Yeah. 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 On bed. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, this, this. Come on. Because they have already said it. Uh, yeah, but, one, very yeah. last one. Very okay, last I one. can provide very... But you just, you just said something to <laughs> okay. someone else. Uh, yes! We, we were discussing that yes. um, the corpus, that, uh, it would be different uh, according to <laughs> according different according to different places mm -hmm. that you use, like maybe in uh, a school mm -hmm. or in a shop. Oh, in different settings. Yeah. They're different, yeah, that's right. and that surprises you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's why uh, when I read this article, uh -huh. that, uh, the assignment, uh -huh. like, okay, I thought that the general frequency words like it's like it's a very center for all the situations. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Like, when we took like toy, uh huh. Or, uh, maybe tof tof is different. Like Toeful that. and toic, toic they're like, different. I think it, it should be like very general. Oh, no, TOEIC is more business, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. business English. I didn't think it's, well, it can be so different. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, we're learning a lot today. <laughs> All right, so. Okay, ready for quizzes? Quiz time. Okay. Oh, it's, I should have created a Kahoot or something. <laughs> Okay, so so it, you know A B C D A B C D. Which of the following best defines a corpus? Usually the long the longest one is the right one. <laughs> a corpus is an electronic list of sta uh, statistics about language. A corpus is a carefully designed collection of real language spoken or written stored on a computer available for analysis by special software. A corpus is only, is any collection of spoken or written text stored on a computer available for analysis by special software. A corpus is an electronic data database just like the internet which contains thousands of written text. So discuss with your group and come up here and write down your answers. <laughs>
Let me show you your groups. Okay, group A would be Catherine, Karen, Ruby, Sherry. Group B should be Rich, Mia, Ryan, Lorena. Um, Jer group C is Jerry, Katie, Amy, Amy, two Amy's. Group D is Patricia, Joanne, Sophie, Lily, Betty. Group E is Serena, Joy, Cindy, Francis. Group F is Valen, Kelly, Sanitas, Anne. Group G is GT, Lillian, Linda, Joy. Which group? Pick, pick a group. Okay, who's not here? You need to, so I keep track of in class participation. You need to let me know who's not here. They're not going to get any points this week. Come, come up here um, and tell me who's not here. <laughs> Do you need us? <laughs> for the C. Jerry, yes. <laughs> we think that uh, it, it is a corpus in is any collection of spoken written texts uh, other than the carefully designed. Yeah, we think that any collection will get more words in, in different situations, so the corpus will be like... Like... <laughs> yes. We don't think careful in design is the word we use here. Yes, that, that's it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Okay, we got um, team G, and then our answer is B. The reason we think the B is because the corpus, we, we strongly agree corpus is carefully designed, 
the corruption is just not it's not just like randomly picked from any kind of occasion. That's why because it's especially like carefully designed so you will know that what we learned before that when uh, what is the frequency word in the restaurant language, what is a frequent word for the classroom language. So it's it needs to be carefully designed. It's just not 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 <laughs> Hi everyone group our fan we agree with Jerry and <laughs> okay, okay. And actually, we're thinking about B or C, but like B, uh, it said like the carefully designed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we choose C. Actually, yeah, because because it's not carefully designed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's it's randomly picked from the written and and spoken text, uh, but uh, and it's carefully analyzed by the computer software. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're, we're still careful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it didn't say carefully designed. Uh, Special software. <laughs> Okay, what what do you, bees, what do you have to say? Uh, may I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I think why B says uh, a corporate is carefully designed is because you know you, you have to like there are some people using that word and then talk to them. Yeah. So, uh, it's like I think the software kind of maybe it has some filter, like some people use it, then they will put that word in the corpus, for example, like Lean Sanity. Uh, if for, like, at first, like just maybe some journalists come up with this term, and then because people use it, then it's being put into a corpus because they're just like because of the technology. Like every day, we just have so many new words, and like like everyone can you know have can make their own word like you know just by their sound. Just like in Chinese, we. We play many like uh, so-called xie and like in English, I, I think especially for uh, native speakers, they do so. But for those make-up words, I don't think you know because maybe just one person used that, that so that word is not being put into the corpus. Yeah, so that's why I think it should be you know carefully designed. Yeah, that's my point. Thank you. Do you, you agree? I, I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> tell, uh, tell them why. We, we, ran, we, we randomly pick words like you said, Linsanity. Because if, if there, there's just one person who uses Linsanity, uh, the system will just like delete it. It will save the in, a, in our corporate corpus. So our system is like a special software. So it will. <laughs> like, <laughs> We picked it randomly, but we selected with heart. <laughs> I don't know what, what I'm talking about. Yes. Someone else from B? I think they agree with my idea. Are y'all going to change to C? If not, just convince them. Okay. Um, should be a very um, carefully because it's a scientific um, analysis and scientific should be um, with careful evidence and analysis and many Ooh. other things so um, you cannot randomly pick something <laughs> uh, and they have to put it into the database right to analyze to analyze it so you have to be so you have to be very careful because it's a science thing yeah that's what I thought are you convinced are you convinced I think she's not I 
don't agree because um, uh, uh, they just said it is carefully uh, carefully analyzed by the uh, computer software. But uh, actually, we think it's yeah, it's carefully analyzed by the computer software. But however, it's uh, because those words, those written words and spoken words uh, are but they come from uh, different contexts like uh, maybe Facebook or other um, platform, social media platform. So uh, I think those words are not uh, carefully written. Uh, they're from they're well, careful, careless, different they opinions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the uh, text is not carefully designed. So, so, so the corpus is not, but the text is not carefully designed. Yeah, yeah. So the corpus is not carefully designed. <laughs> 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 but the, the computer software is carefully designed, but the context from the the context inside is not carefully designed. <laughs> So, so the corpus, the sources from yeah, the, sources. the sources. You mean the sources are not carefully designed? Yes. Yeah. Randomly pick the sources. So, so let me let me ask you: Are you going? Do you favor Reddit over Facebook, or Facebook over Reddit? Your in your opinion. <laughs> Oh, so Facebook. So for your corpus, you're, you're only going to use Facebook, or you're going to add Facebook and Reddit. Facebook and Reddit and everything. And, and, yeah. Facebook and Reddit and everything. Yeah, we just pick as much as possible, and then we just anal analyze it. Then. Okay, so are you going to tell your users where your source is from? Are we? <laughs> 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 Are we going to tell them? <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. So, so, so actually, I think they have a point because uh, they're coming, they're looking at it from like collecting the largest corpus there there is. So they wanted to include everything, and they think that it doesn't have to be carefully designed as long as we're just including everything. Okay. But bees, for bees, they think that it should be carefully designed because because we can hit for the, the 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 words. Yeah, because like some some things if like uh, we see this word in the Facebook, some things <coughs> that we see in other social media, we mm -hmm. would know what kind of media they would use the words frequently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. I think just like algorithm, the the math is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so we come from a standpoint where if it's carefully designed, we will be able to tell our users, oh, this is American English corpus. This is British English corpus. Okay, this is business English corpus. This is what? Academic corpus. Only we only include lectures and textbooks. So that way, so carefully designed corpus, you know, you know, you could it's it's there for a purpose. Um, you could better inform your users that way. And we do need carefully designed corpus. <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps you guys are going to build us the largest corpus there is to include everything. Right, so you come from that standpoint, but the the uh, the correct answer is usually we especially we we uh, carefully design our corpus and we even give out their like how many percent of how how many words come from this source how many words come from that source so we could um, so we could cross analyze the same word in different sources you know so remember we're. Remember, we're um, comparing spoken to written. If they're all in one corpus, if they're all in one corpus, can we, can we, do we know that there's a specific like spoken language, spoken language is different from written language, right? Yeah. Remember you just said you're, you're a junior high school teacher and we don't teach, you know, <laughs> right? 
right? So, so, so that in that case, we, we are separating these corpus, the sources. So we don't include everything so that we could, you know, have a, we, we have an angle to analyze it, provide more accurate information into the setting that, in which we use that language so, so we could better, be better informed. But those are wonderful debates. I love it. Thank you all very much. I really enjoy, this is the favorite part of my, my class. I like, I love it. I love your arguments. They all make sense. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, 7.43 now. Let's take a break, a uh, 10 minute break, and when we come back, we'll continue. Thank you. So, we have a general idea what a corpus is, uh, and that we know that it's a carefully designed, it's a carefully designed database of language, and um, now I would like you to, I, I would like to show you this website, uh, lexduter.ca, lexduter.ca. What I would like you to do is, I, you know, I, I usually start with vocab profile. Vocab profile. They have VP Kids or VP Classics, VP Complete, VP Phrases, VP COCA. COCA stands for, this is uh, contemporary, uh, I forgot, I forgot the term, wait, uh, it's right here. Co co the Corpus of Contemporary American English, that's COCA. The Corpus of Contemporary American English. Why isn't it C-O-C-A-E? <laughs> yeah. All right, so, um, so, you know, so this is, this is mainly for kids. So the, um, the grouping, it's different. They, they group it every like 250 words uh, based on two, like 250 word for one band. So I would, you could, you could try out VP complete. It's more complete, you could say, you could see that it has um, Brown National Corpus, BNC, um, and BNC COCA, uh, these, and BNC COCA Core. NGSL, you see, and they've provided NGSL 3000, okay? So, uh, you know, if you go inside, you could s select which corpus you want to compare your, um, your list with. So, like, right here, NGSL, right, right? Okay, so, well, well, um, basically, you delete this, and I like to focus on scorpion, spoken corpus, so I would like, uh, I would like to pick, um, what do you like to pick? Sorry, this is my son. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything. 
Okay. I have rotten apple. And I would like you to to um, click on this toggle timestamps. And what I would like you to do is highlight it. Okay. Won't do the whole thing. Oh my God, 56 minutes? <laughs> okay, it's the end. Okay, copy, paste. Okay, co what's it, NGSL? Okay, submit. And you can see, for NGSL, Okay, you remember, remember, um, you know, what's, what uh, Charles Brown discussed in the, his paper? Okay, so for this, for this cartoon, uh, this is NGSL, the, the uh, 1,000, the first thousand words, the second thousand words. So for the first, th first thousand words, um, the accumulated token, token, Token means one word each, okay? Is 80, so 80%, 80.9% of all the words come from the first thousand words, okay? And then, and then if you add 2,000 words, first and second thousand words, it would cover 85.8%. 3,000 words, it would cover 88%. So, what does this tell us? It's appropriate. It's appropriate? Yeah. Um, it's not entirely. But, but, but um, Charles Brown told us if you have 3,000 words, if you, if you learn 3,000 words, that 3,000 words could almost cover like 90% of the text right, you, you encounter, or the words that you encounter. So from this, even a, like a, a cartoon show, baby cart, you know, like this cartoon show, um, well, I think it roughly, it's roughly 90%, roughly 90%. So, so we're, we're also checking, checking if, you know, if what he says is, you know, believable. <laughs> With your with our own evidence, okay. So this is like for for kids, cartoon for kids. I would like you to compare like a cartoon versus a show that you watch, you know, on YouTube, okay, and see if there's a difference. So do a screen catch capture, and perhaps perhaps create use a Google document and share it there. So I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Okay, so that this is what we're gonna do now. Uh, do I need to do it again? Okay, so so what what I what I did was I key in Lex L E X like Lexile. It means like word. Tutor T U T O R. Dot .ca so it's it's very easy to remember lextutor.ca and then i click on vocab profile okay and i click on vb complete because it's got all the different corpus uh, that we need and especially the one that uh, ngsl is pretty new but they have it so it's really good so i just uh, delete this and um, copy and paste what I what I got from uh, the uh, the YouTube channel. Okay, hit submit. Remember remember to click on N oh NGSL plus AWL or TOEIC or BIS. Um, okay, or we could try something else. BN BNC Coca covering um, yeah BNC Coca. Cobb and Laffer, Nation and uh, a real seed. Oh, okay, count. No, uh, there's a total of three thousand 
170 words and submit window oh wow so you see here this is pretty good so you could see different corpus would create different results you could generate different results so based on British National Corpus and COCA, com the Corpus of Contemporary American English. You can see that for this cartoon, 87% um, covers uh, K1 words, 92%. So with only 2,000 words from B and C, you can basically understand 92% of the words that is uh, used in this text. I'm not talking about comprehension, understanding the whole thing, I'm only saying the words, okay? It's different. All right, so let's try this, all right? Yeah. Okay, so, so type is different. Uh, token would be what, like, different words. Types would be, you have teach, you have teacher. It's like word families, types. Okay, word families, similar words that are grouped together, like fam families, types, yeah, similar. The ex
Okay, please. Yeah, uh, create a Google document. Please share your Google Doc to uh, Facebook. Um, yeah, okay. so that's so we can keep track of your tasks for today. To compare to. Yeah, compare two different. One for young, one for adults. Oh, one for young. Everyone needs to Remember, remember your uh, document Google document name, please. Uh, give me your group name and name. No, group and then your name. Group and then name. Group and then name and then uh, perhaps like one of the video, the topic of the video you selected. One, only one. So. No, just for the title. Oh, just for the title. Mike, so my would be mine would be group, for example, group H. H and then Jane. And then what did I hit? Um, perhaps
whole group text. So we see um, the words in text and different words in Pakistan. So we're going to compare that after everybody's done their searches, okay? So I chose one song for Hala song and I think otherwise can't compare it. Because I don't know which one. What adult movie to choose from. Okay. Songs are different. Okay. Songs are different. Yeah. But yeah, they, 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 that's a... So I just yeah, because I don't watch the... Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right here and I'm gonna show you one more information, okay? No? It, it wouldn't go away. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Oh, okay, see? So this is the analysis, the same analysis. If you scroll down, it's color coded, right? Color coded. Yeah. Uh, this is the original uh, uh, text that's being color coded. And if you can see here, this is the number of times that this word is uh, has appeared. Okay. So which so which word do we teach? Ghost. Yeah, and <laughs> the spray. Because it's mentioned so many times, right? So we can teach these two words. And it's most likely that they would remember because it's how many times it, when you hear a word you would most likely remember? What? 26 times? <laughs> okay, anyway, so. So this is this could you could better you could be better informed and you can choose which vocabulary you want to teach based on these um, these results. Okay. Wow. Applause is used a lot of times. And fart is a canine word. <laughs> Okay, so uh, all the word lists are down in the bottom. If you scroll, ah, what happened? <laughs> okay, here. So these are what uh, the first K words, okay, the second K words, third K words, four, four K, fifth K, six K. 7K, 9K, 8,000, 8, 8, um, 9,000, 10,000. Hamster! Viper, leper. Freaking! Oh, believe it or not, hippo is the word we teach kids when it's for the letter H. <laughs> but it's not very common uh, in this uh, BNC Toka. Woof! Seesaw, go be. All right, all right. So, so you have an idea, okay? Yeah. So I would like you to pick like two words that you would teach. Okay. Based on your uh, analysis. Thank you. 
Okay, um, it's a it's about eight thirty right now. Um, I think we need to get going. So please do post whatever you have onto Facebook. Post, post, uh, post the, the link, but please write a short text about what you've analyzed, like uh, the two that you picked and uh, you know, the two you picked and um, we're comparing the cartoons. Is your cartoon easy or more difficult? Let's, uh, let's say, what's the percentage? To, what percentage do we usually use? <coughs> what percentage? Is it 85, 90, or 95? Based on our reading of Charles, Charles Brown's uh, paper. You, re you need to remember the percentage. Usually when we compare different texts uh, for maximum uh, you know, understanding of the text, better understanding of the text, it should be 95% coverage. So we usually go for 95% coverage. So you take a look at the K1, K2, K3, Look, go look and uh, for 95%, how many words do they need? Okay, so please do report, like, for example, what, what is, what is, what cartoon did you pick? I picked. Oh, I love that one. Curious George and for for the kids. Ninety five percent would all for ninety five percent coverage students kids need at least K five. So you only reach yeah, yeah. So it's curious George for for you to understand Curious George, you need to have at least K-5 words, okay? That's fairly difficult. But on the other hand, you could say if you let your kids watch Curious George, they would accumulate 5,000 words, right? Right, because, because of the visuals, and it's animated, and it's slow, it's fun. And the result almost is the same as the... It's almost the same as a talk show <laughs> because Curious George is more science, more problem solving. Yeah. No, I no no I like Curious George. You, can, you get to learn a lot from the monkey. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's so see it's interesting. <laughs> so I'm eager to find out your results. So give me, yeah, give me some visuals, perhaps like a vi Curious George like um, screen capture and then say 5K words. <laughs> Need 5K words. <laughs>
Did anyone um, take like crime investigation or so Dr. Series? I wonder how many words you need. Two K right? You only need two K words, right? You understand? Yeah. yeah. So, so the reason why um, it has like coverage 98%, it's even better. It's even better, right? So, 95 or 98, it's like usually we. Uh, this is like a, you know, what we usually look at when we analyze text. All right. <laughs> Please. How are we doing? We need to we, we need to give um, our presenting group some time. So Are required to reach like 95% coverage? I think they both failed. Okay. So, so Karen, um, yeah, because we're, we're using NGSL. Mm -hmm. NGSL, that's the new uh, general service list I charged on. Perhaps you could do try uh, British na uh, na uh, National British Camp Corpus and BNC. Okay. Brown Brown yeah. National Corpus and um, All Nations List. If you do that again, then perhaps you find the results. Again. Thank you, Karen. You're the first. A Eden. Oh, okay. Every time Hera appears in a legend of Cora, right? And behind the scenes, Stranger Things podcast. Wow. Which one is for kids? Uh, the Legend of Cora. The Legend Avatar. of Cora. Yeah. Can, can you can you tell us the coverage? Almost. Yeah, I think you should. You should also select the MC. EMC. Oh. Almost the same. Yeah, the, the two are almost the same.
You know, from what I found out from your analysis, I found that uh, B and C uh, would produce, like, the word list that was that is provided by B and C um, by whole nation, and it would uh, cover less words, but less words are required. The coverage is the coverage is ninety five percent is like a yeah. Oh, come, come. come here. Oh, okay. I see your I see your I see your request. I thought I needed to send out invitation. SpongeBob is actually easier yeah. than Peppa Pig. Yes. Wow. That's See. interesting. That's <laughs> <laughs> the word of SpongeBob is such like screen <laughs> or uh, yeah, screen. Uh, A lot of screaming. Room. Room. <laughs> Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> Eagle. Yeah. Can you put down in the text um, 6K and 7K? Okay. By the title. Um, 
I'm going to pause right here, pause you for a second, and, I, and um, I'm going to let you watch a short video, and then we'll uh, invite our presenting group tonight for tonight to come on the stage and share uh, the article paper with us.
new general service list, we uh, uh, were able to get full access to the Cambridge English Corpus, which is a two billion word corpus with uh, many uh, corpus tools to help us to uh, divide and analyze uh, the findings. And we took uh, a sample of 273 million words uh, using the subcorpora that we thought were most representative of the needs of second language learners, and we're able to get uh, quite good coverage. Right, so you see how carefully designed this corpus is uh, for each corpus adding to the total they they the number of tokens they have uh, for each token but uh, for each uh, one okay we're most representative of the needs of second language learners and we're able to get uh, quite good coverage um, how could we get such good coverage well this is uh, due to a mathematical principle known as Zipf's law and what you can see on the right is a 10 million word sample uh, from the Cambridge English corpus randomly selected. And if you uh, look at the first 2,000 most frequent words in that sample, um, the, the blue bar represents 83% of the corpus, 8.3 million out of 10 million words are the same 2,000 words occurring over and over again. And you can see the incredibly steep drop off for the coverage by the next 2,000 words and the next 2,000 words. Um, that drop off is known as the Ziffian curve. Uh, and the blue box, uh, represents the, the, the most frequent, most important words in that corpus. And that's basically what the new general service list is, is those blue words. Um, so, um, what, but we made much more than just the new general service list. Um, that's the yellow uh, box at the bottom. And we, we consider that to be uh, the most important step one for most language learners. Um, what we're trying to do is to create a, a, a large growing number of uh, English for specific purpose uh, or, uh, word lists um, uh, that kind of fit in a modular way with the uh, new general service list. Uh, we have lists for academic English, TOEIC English, business English, fitness English, and a few others that are, are coming out uh, soon. And so what you would do is step one would be to learn the NGSL words, and step two would be to, to, to learn the uh, special purpose uh, word list that best fits your needs or the needs of your institution. Um, okay, so why do we believe that the new general service list should always be step one? This is because um, uh, the words in the NGSL are words that occur in the real world. They occur in books and newspapers and TV and radio. Uh, conversational language, they occur everywhere. If you were to study only uh, TOEIC English, for example, you might get a high score on the TOEIC test, but after you finish studying, you're not doing really well in the real world. So if you study the NGSL plus the TOEIC list, you're kind of, um, you know, just about the same number of words, but you're getting very good coverage in, in, in the real world. Um, so let me just very quickly introduce a few of our uh, special purpose. Uh, word list, the first one being the academic word list. Um, and we have a 288 million word academic corpus. Uh, a good chunk of it is from the Cambridge corpus, but we also added 3 million words of, of oral lectures, oral academic lectures, and 36 million words of uh, top selling academic textbooks. What you can see is that the coverage by the NGSL actually drops a bit to only 86% coverage for uh, academic English. Uh, it's because academic English is very, very different than general English. But then if you study the 960 academic words in our new academic word list, you get right back up to 92% uh, coverage again. Um, and we were well aware of, of Avril Coxhead's uh, 2000 uh, academic word list, which I th we, we all think is a great list. Um, and uh, we think, you know, for many people, that's the right choice. But for our modular approach, um, um, Avril's list uh, was, was based on word families, whereas ours are, are based more on, on, on modified lemmas, and, and the cutoff point is a little bit different. So we needed to create a new one. But you can see uh, from the slide here that the new uh, academic word list is actually offering about 5% more coverage than the old academic word list uh, combined with the old GSL. And uh, so anyhow, we think they're, they're, they're pretty good uh, options if, if this is if this is the focus of your of your program, um, we also created a TOEIC word list because this is a very high stakes exam for students in Asia, 
and uh, many, most of our students are you know, kind of forced uh, to take uh, this exam for a variety of purposes. And uh, we were able to create a, a TOEIC uh, word list uh, from a 1.5 million word uh, corpus of TOEIC English. And uh, with only 1,200 uh, TOEIC words, if you add that on to the NGSL for a total of 4,000 words, you're getting literally 100% coverage, 99% coverage of the, of the TOEIC exam. You can also see that the NGSL is offering 94% coverage for TOEIC, meaning that it's a very uh, excellent uh, first step for, for TOEIC. Now, TOEIC is supposed to be business English, but actually it's not. It's really just test English. And uh, there's a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence uh, for that. And so the uh, year that we, the same year that we published the TOEIC service list for, to help people to pass the TOEIC exam, we also decided we wanted to publish a, a real uh, business uh, word list uh, for the use of business in, in the real world. So this is the business service list. Uh, it's based on a 64 million word business corpus we made. Uh, we use web crawlers. We uh, have a huge collection of business magazines, business newspapers. We use the British National Corpus uh, subsection and a large uh, selection of business textbooks. And here, uh, we're able to get 97% coverage with uh, just the addition of 1,700 uh, business words. So again, very short, very efficient, very high uh, coverage. Um, the fitness list is, was not actually our, our next choice for uh, making uh, lists, but we were actually requested directly by uh, a company. Uh, this was a, a famous American uh, gym uh, chain of gyms that wanted to open their uh, gyms in Japan and they wanted to uh, try to um, have the gym be English medium and they knew that Japanese would struggle with that so they wanted me to help them to identify a very short list of fitness English words that would that would give them very high coverage that the instructors could use and that the uh, students could learn that would help them to conduct the uh, lessons in English and we were able to do so. Um, and about a 10 million word fitness corpus we created and it only required about 600 additional words beyond the NGSL to get us up to about 98% coverage. And this list, like all of our lists, is, is available for free download from our website. Uh, we also have two kind of unusual lists. One is uh, um, the NGSLS, which is the spoken version of the NGSL. We had several requests after we published the NGSL uh, to uh, give out the uh, frequencies for just the spoken subsections because there are uh, certain college programs that focus just on spoken English. And so we had 11 million words of TV English, 27 million words of unscripted spoken English, and 28 million words of radio English. And we took that and separately calculated the frequencies. And what you can see on the left is that to get to 90% coverage for the full NGSL corpus uh, required about 2,100 words before we got to 90% coverage. But for the spoken uh, corpus, uh, we only needed 718 words. Uh, so you know, very, very short list, very high coverage. The final list we made is called the New Dolce List, and this is a list of 875 words of children's English, uh, and this is to replace the 1936 Old Dolce List, which really was only for the purpose of native speakers, not non-native speakers. Uh, but we noticed that a lot of uh, EFL, uh, ESL publishing companies and schools were using the New Dolce List, the Old Dolce List, because they had no other lists to, to use and thought this would be a good project. And so we just published a few months ago in the Dolce list and we're able to get about 90% coverage uh, with only 875 words. And this is specifically designed for the needs of second language learners. Now, uh, we also have a, a website, which uh, is the place to go for all of our word lists and all of our uh, online uh, learning, learning tools. Uh, for each list, um, you can get them in, uh, you can download them in alphabetized form or lemmatized form uh, or with uh, frequency data or with uh, definitions we've written for every word in Easy English. Um, all of our lists uh, we've also made available through free uh, flashcard sites like Quizlet and Memrise, uh, so uh, that's, that's another uh, thing that you can use. We've made a series of free uh, uh, flashcard apps for uh, the new general service list, the new academic word list, uh, and the, as well as the old GSL and the old AWL. Uh, that's called NGSL Builder. 
and they use space repetition flashcards. You can get links to that from our website. The one at the bottom is our brand new uh, app, which is called WordLearner, which is a much more uh, robust uh, app. It has not just flashcards, but also eight different uh, learning games, a 90,000 word uh, learner dictionary, uh, a learner management system, and testing function. Um, so that's worth checking out too. We also have uh, very good uh, tests for the new general service list and for the new academic word list. These were developed by Tim Stokel and Phil Bennett. Uh, there are many, many published research articles on these tests, very high reliability, very high validity, also downloadable from our website. We've uh, just recently created a video concordancing resource. Uh, so every word in every one of our word lists is now directly linked. Uh, to the Uglish website, which gives uh, hundreds of examples of the words being used in real life uh, context. Video, it's a video concordance, and uh, you know, based on the idea of data driven learning, very fun uh, resource. We've created um, uh, text analysis tools. One is called the OGTE Online Graded Text Editor. That's Rob Ware and I uh, developed and put that up. Uh, Tom Cobb's vocab profile also has all of our word lists. Uh, that's there for you to use as well. Um, there are a number of uh, publishers and software companies that are using our word lists. Uh, so there are those kind of resources for you. And Rob and I, Rob Waring and I, have also created a free extensive reading uh, website with tons of resources for um, students and for teachers for, um, for doing extensive reading uh, online. Um, the last page of our uh, website uh, lists all of our research articles that have been published on the new general service list and you can also uh, take a look at the TED talk I did uh, a couple of years ago uh, introducing the first two of our word lists. So um, that, that concludes uh, Charles' uh, topic. Um, thank you so much for being Together this session uh, uh, during a TESOL conference. All right, so let's welcome our presenting group. Please come up here. Come on, So hi everyone, we're, so we're all from, we are from group one, and here's my group members, Catherine, Karen, and Eva, me, Ruby. So we're going to talk about the NGSO project. So first of all, I will introduce the key terms and author, journal, and year, and the last one, evidence. And my group members will continue to introduce the rest of the part. Okay, so the first one, uh, authors, you all know it's Dr. Charles Brown, and he's from uh, Meiji Gun University, and it's in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> and the journal is called JALT COSIC, and in JALT that means Japanese Association for Language Teaching. So J, uh, it is a professional orga organization in Japan and it, dicta it dictated to language teaching and learning. And the year it established in 2021. So the first of all, I will talk about the key terms, NGSO. So we all know it's almost 28,100 high frequency English vocabulary world families. and. It is based on the large and diverse collection of primary written and spoken texts. So, here are the others materials. Okay, so here are the key terms from the journal. And should we go over a few? Oh, okay. <laughs> So the first one is Divso, and it helps 
in text summarized by identifying and providing the most relevant and frequent words. And it is a mathematic, uh, scientific, echoes Zip's soul. It is from him, his introduction from the Zip's soul. And then the next one, we can see the new Dutch list, that means NDL. And it is a list of high frequency English words often used in children's reading books, also in old adult literature. And then the third one is new academic word list, and we go call NAWL. So it consists of 900 words, families, and which include single words and their inflective forms. And uh, as for this one, it is a list of academic vocabulary words designed to help learners of English to improve their academic reading and writing skills. So the third, the third, uh, no, the fourth one, learning mathematic systems, LMS. So they are commonly used in various educational institutions, business and organization to streamline learning and development process. And as for this one, they are commonly used in various education institutions. So the platforms include Canvas, Blackboard, and Scology, and or Google Classroom, and many others. So the last one, NGSLT. So it is a okay, it is a diagnostic test of written receptive knowledge of the NGSL. So it is a test for the NGSL. So these are the other materials or other key terms. And the last one, I will introduce the evidence that we find in the journal is summarized like 25 studies. So here is my part and next one will be so, I would like to talk about what can I learn from this uh, secondary research is that I think NGSL is a very good uh, reference to uh, because now I'm trying to build up a so-called like English passport I think many like many elementary schools and even high school, they have such, you know, just kind of learning certificate. Like in Chinese, we call it Yu Hu Zhao. Because I'm currently teaching in an in remote area and I'm the only English teacher. So I think this, I, I definitely will check this out too when I'm going to uh, build, try to make a so-called so English passport. Like, I think because I'm teaching in an elementary school, so the words that I choose should, it should be like uh, in the NGSL, the first 1,000 words, it should be covered. But of course, I won't, I, I won't just pick up, you know, all the 1,000 words from NGSL. Maybe I'll just pick half of them. I think, yeah, like maybe 500 words in average for my students is kind of in enough yeah since like we're still in an EFL environment and they don't really have any English exposure outside of school like almost no one go to cram school or like their parents also or grandparents also they, they don't speak English at all so they could only rely on me like during English class and um, you know some daily like extracurricular English activities. So I think yeah, all in all, I think NGSO is a good reference, and I will check it out. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Frank. I, I, I know it's perhaps my fault that yeah. I provided you with only second like this four format. <laughs> um, but this is not a secondary research because. Uh, you know, I think I, I need to clarify what secondary research means. It, um, usually, secondary research meaning um, the data is from the data we generate. We, we don't have our own data. 
Okay, we're, we're not using our own data to produce the um, results. So with this one, NGSL, uh, Dr. Charles Brown is actually, he, he built his own corpus, so he was generating his own, you know, list. So this is like a first hand, it's, uh, it's not a secondary research. So here I would uh, point out, what can I learn from this research? Instead of saying that this as a secondary research. So um, other secondary research would be a study of 25 studies of um, corpus, okay? And then we are ge generating and analyzing different results. Uh, analyzing the results and comparing effect size of the results and tell, you know, telling us like a pattern of like the trend, okay? So we will get to that um, in, the, in our next paper. Yeah, AI. AI, AI that so one is a meta-analysis and that, 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 that's based on uh, yeah, so yeah. Okay. So Thank you. Yeah. Great. So we'll change that, we'll change that. No problem, no problem. You guys are the first. Okay. So um, I'm going to briefly talk about what does they find. So I don't need because my hands are busy. <laughs> okay. okay, can you hear me? Really? Okay, great. So first, it found that it would be good to understand a whole um, maybe text of 90, if you um, if you know 90% of the vocabulary, it will be good. And it will be perfect to understand 95 to 98%. So this is the first finding. And, okay, and the second is the zip, Zip's Law. No, think. <laughs> okay, so this law says in the natural language, oh my god. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so in the natural language, there's a very small part of the vocabulary that we use frequently. So if we can memorize all of them, which is the NGSL. Mm -hmm. You can, um, it's the first step, shortcut to learn a language. So my understand is this is the ice cream cone. You need the cone to, and then you can choose your own ice cream. For example, the business, academic, or the fitness workout, okay. So the third is, okay, and number three um, is the new Dutch list because all uh, we are EFL learners and mostly we learn from the textbook. So they collect the, um, the uh, all our input come from the textbook, so they collect the list from all the textbook for teachers to know better about their learners. Okay, so this is all my part. Thank you. Okay, so the last one will be reintroducing how can we use the findings in our teaching. And I think basically because we are watching, uh, we are reading the, 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 the thing so in the journal, so I kind of like lock into what they provided, so maybe later you guys can discuss about what else you can provide to everybody to use in our teaching. So first one, basically you can use the word list itself. <coughs> so you already saw those, the, the uh, Dr. Charles shared in the video that there is a glossary that you can link to the short video showing you how to pronounce those words. So I think this will be a good tool to let our students to maybe listen to the pronunciation back in their home 
even though they're not, they're no teacher beside them, they can o always practice those pronunciations. And next one will be the the, the NGSLT, which is the test to diagnose how many words the students know. So you can know maybe which one or which part that they still don't know, then we can focus on those words rather than all the words in the NGSL. And the third one will be the flashcard, which you guys may be really familiar with, which is Quizlet or other free flashcard website or apps. You can use that. They, they've already uh, designed some of the flashcard websites based on NGSL, so you may link to their website to see those free uh, resources. And the fourth one, because of the because of too many words here, so I'm not able to put it inside, but the fourth one I think is the most important one, I think. <laughs> most important one, take it out. I will put it back later. <laughs> so the fourth one I think will be the most helpful for teachers because the for the first three, I think, might be more helpful for te for students, but the fourth one will be the most helpful for us because you can put your content, or maybe if you search for other uh, extensive reading, you can put it into the the. Uh, it has the let me see the name for that. It's like just what we are doing in the class, you can put the content into the, uh, the, li the link and then they can show you how many words is in the NGSL, how many words for the first 1,000 words or something, then you can decide whether this one, this content, the words is enough, is too hard or something for your students. So you can maybe just uh, make some changes to make them more uh, comprehensible for your students. So I think the fourth one, you can come, I will put it back later. <laughs> you can know how to adjust your contents. I think that will be more helpful for us rather than the first three. So I think that one will be the best one. I'll put it back later. <laughs> so I think that it's all, oh, yes. So um, Karen, I do love this part. Your drawing is perfect. Um, and, you know, for this, you could probably include that in my drawing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love how you. Um, <coughs> and I love to make it better. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's. It, uh, and also, because this is what does it find, um, perhaps this is not a binding, but this is like. Based on literature review, um, we know that 90% is good, but 95 to 98% is is what we're aiming for. Is the what's the word? What is the word? Thresh. 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 Threshold. 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 Do you know what a threshold is? Benchmark time. Yes. It's so like a benchmark. Thresholds are you know. A, a, for, for the doors, usually you have a threshold you have to cross uh -huh. over. So for threshold, it's like you need to reach <clears throat> to that point when something happens. And that something is reading comprehension or comprehension generally, uh, overall comprehension. So that threshold, and remember this word, threshold um, is 95 to 98%. So this is not the binding, but this is like uh, based on literature review. So what is the finding? What is the finding? The finding is here. Yeah, and, and this one. Um, NGSL, if this is, if this is um, whole nat natural language, uh, I don't know if, if this, I, I think this should be bigger. Because it covers, it covers, it, uh, covers more. Uh, do you remember on the the video, the first two thousand words, the bar chart, eighty five percent is within the two thousand word list. So, so that coverage is telling us we need to learn these two thousand words first because for the whole per corpus. That 2,000 words, it covers 85% of every word 
in the corpus. So basically, do you, do you know what I mean? So his, the coverages would be larger. Okay. Um, and for, because after 2000 word, the, the single like words, for example, threshold, it would be really, it, it would appear really um, rare, right? Perhaps some of you, you know, for this, this is your first time you encounter the word threshold. So it's really very rare, rare, okay? So, yeah, so what, what the finding is, what, what is the finding? I like this. The, the binding is the cone. The cone is the edge of the Yeah, so how, how many words? Right? I like this. Okay? Um, and what, what is it saying? What is it saying? Mm, it, it was, was his 95%? What? Catherine, you're right. 92. 92%. Remember, let's get back to. Okay. Let's get back to this. So for 90. Okay. Uh, for, for some. I remember it's 92%. Ninety-two percent. Okay. And GSL ninety-two for percent for general corpus. Okay. Ninety-two percent. So this is the result. Okay. But they and you've all checked that based on what you're finding. Did it reach ninety-two percent? I was asking you to see if it reaches ninety-five percent. Did it reach ninety-two percent for the three thousand words? Does it? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, for, for example, this one. NGSL. Let's take a look. This one, um, NGSL 3,000 word list, 89%, so no. No, no. Because they're adding NAWL. NA, how many words are in NAWL? 900. Okay, so, so, that's Powerpuff Girls, you know, it did not reach, it, the, our fi what our finding did not match what Charles Brown said. We're trying to provide evidence to prove him wrong. <laughs> you know, this is, we, we need this app, you know, this is what we do for graduate students. We're proving someone wrong. And you create a paper on that, analyzing all the cartoons and tell him, no, you're wrong. <laughs> you, our cartoons need more <coughs> words than 2,800. OK? Do you know what I mean? So that's the whole purpose of us doing this analysis on our own, because we now have the ability to prove some, someone wrong, someone who created the general service list. OK? They were the, uh, the ones that um, presented the very first. The very first group is the most difficult one. And thank you, and that's all for today. Please, re uh, if you haven't finished your task, you could stay and finish it, or you can take it back home and finish it later before um, our next class. OK, thank you. Thank you. Can you please update your... Okay.